of one's newest invention, the Bang Bang Continuous Fire Mechanism. Hands up and surrender, or be prepared to face the full might of the Adepti. Today is my treat. Huh. It's you two. What brings you here? Sincho! Great, we found you! We wanted to ask you about something. Hmm... That's not a whole lot of information to go off of. I don't know if I can say for sure. I can't pinpoint her identity from your description alone. But, considering her age, I am reminded of a nameless heroine who's been featured in various chivalric novels. Nameless heroine? That's right. The novels often speak of a great drought from 50 years ago. As the people suffered, a nameless heroine appeared and began to clear away evil spirits and bandit camps. The people idolized her, but never learned her name. All they knew was that she always acted alone. Later, though, she supposedly fell in love with a similarly noble-minded exorcist from Mount Tianhang. They were well-matched in more ways than one, often fighting together as a fearsome duo of otherworldly strength. After the drought ended, the heroine and the exorcist left the public eye and began living a reclusive life in the mountains. All that remained were tales of her incredible accomplishments. The way this nameless heroine faded from fame into obscurity later in life is not too dissimilar from Miss Yuendai. I hope that's somewhat helpful. Thanks a lot, Xingqiu. We knew it'd be worth talking to you. It's nothing at all. Just something I came across while reading. I did do a bit of extra research on her story, but it was just out of personal curiosity. Well, Paimon still thinks that's super cool. Oh, wait, Xingqiu, if you've read up on her, do you know of any places often associated with her? Let me think. In the novels, the nameless heroine always appeared near one of three places. Wangshu Inn, the area just north of Jue Yun Karst, and Qingyun Peak. Perhaps the real-life heroine who inspired the character was also often seen near those three places. That would explain why those locations appear in the various novels written about her. <laughs> You're welcome. To be honest, I found some parts of the story confusing when I first came across it. If Miss Yuendai was indeed the original inspiration for the character, she may just be able to help me put the pieces together. It's rare for a chivalric hero to fade into obscurity during their lifetime, even after retiring from the public eye. But no one ever saw or heard from the nameless heroine again. There were even rumors that she became extremely ill. I've never understood why someone would go to such lengths to erase themselves from public memory. It's almost as if she was trying to hide from something. There's probably far more to the story than what's been written. We'll be sure to tell you if we manage to uncover the truth. That's a deal. Perhaps, behind the truth of it all, there lies a story more fantastical than any work of fiction. Paimon feels like we just learned so much from Shinkyo. A drought, a nameless heroine, a life of seclusion. Uh, wait, why does the story sound super familiar? Oh, right! There's a drought in this story, too! Um, Xingqiu, are droughts super common in Liyue or something? Well, they used to be. But people have long since developed methods to prevent them. Like by cultivating the soil or digging canals. So while droughts do happen from time to time, they are rarely regarded as true disasters. The drought 50 years ago is probably one of the worst we've had in the last several centuries. The crops withered, the streams ran dry, and the monsters in the mountains became rabid and agitated. Countless caravans were attacked, and people who lost their homes came together to form bandit groups. What started as a natural disaster soon became a human tragedy as well. That sounds awful! 
Yeah. And that's exactly why the nameless heroine was so beloved. She must have been someone of true integrity, to do so much for the people while asking nothing in return. Still, as terrible as that drought was, it was nothing compared to the truly calamitous disasters that befell this land in ancient times. They say that back in those days, disasters were both more severe and more common. Only the strongest of Adepti could hope to dispel the ruin and devastation. Do you have any other questions? We're good for now. We're just going to head back and meet up with Miss Yanyan and the others again. Paimon hopes that Granny Yuendai will be able to remember more of her past. She used to be a great hero who saved many people. So sad that she can't recall any of it. Anyway, we'll be off now. See you some other time, Xingqiu. Thank you so much for your help. It's no problem at all. Safe travels. I have recorded the tune that you requested. I hope it will be of help to you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Straight word w Ping. What has amused you so? Oh, it's no serious matter. I was just reminiscing about the last time I saw you in this form. Time has wrought such change in this world, and yet you appear just the same as ever. Time has little bearing on one's existence, nor has one keenly felt its effects whilst dwelling at Mount Outsong. Nevertheless, Ping, one would like to seek your counsel on a personal matter. Oh, why so formal all of a sudden? I must say, you're making me a little nervous. What is it? Well, the inquiry is as such. A approximately how much Mora would one need to afford a comfortable life in the harbor, not unlike the one that you yourself lead. Hmm. It does not require as much as you may think. Still, do you mean that... Cloud Retainer, Madam Ping! Uh, what are you two talking about? <clears throat> Nothing save for some trivial matters. <sighs> Have you unearthed any useful details? Shinto has a theory, but let's save it for when Chu Yu and Miss Yundai have joined up with us again. Hmm. Do not be troubled, young lady. Here, have some tea. Uh, thank you so much. What do you think, Chu Yu? Does it match up with what you know of your granny? <sighs> According to the story, the nameless heroine eventually fell in love with an exorcist from Mount Tianhung. Maybe... that's my grandpa. I don't have many memories of him, but there is this one time I found a box in her attic full of a bunch of weird sigils. I think so too. Granny might remember something once she's returned to a familiar place. What marvelous tea. I can taste the dew's sweetness in this cup. It's as if I was taking a stroll in the mountains, thoroughly one with nature, and at peace. Is that so? Then please drink as much as you like. There's no need to hurry. At our age, it's always nice to slow down and take the time to appreciate pleasant conversation among friends. Thank you. Okay, since we have the time, can I ask you something? Sure thing. What would you like to know? Um, I have a secret I want to tell you. Let's go talk over there. You? Well, I've been kind of meaning to ask ever since we started talking in the restaurant, but are you guys all adepti in disguise? Oh! Uh, about that. 
Well, you guys just seem super special. Plus, I think I might have heard Miss Shen Yun call herself an adeptus. Ah, must have been a slip of the tongue. Uh, Shen Yun, since you were the one who, uh, misspoke, maybe you can explain to Xu Yu here what you really meant by that. <sighs> one is indeed an adeptus. Is that of some concern to you? Well, one time when I was a little kid, I saw a pure white illuminated crane. I had this super high fever, and Granny wasn't around. I was feeling all icky and gross. But then this snowy white crane flew down from the sky. She put me on her back and flew me to her cool adeptus house and fed me some sort of magic potion. When I woke up, I was already back in my bed, and my fever was gone. I really wanted to thank her, but I was too sleepy to stay awake, so I never got the chance. So, I just kind of wanted to ask if maybe any of you have ever met an adeptus like that? A pure white illuminated crane? The only two we've ever met are blue and white and black and brown. Have you ever met one that's pure white, Clavertina? Hmm. Never has one met an adeptus with such features. One surmises such a description is but a hyperbolic embellishment that oft results from narrative accounts. That's weird. Was it really just a dream then? Well, even if it was just in my head, it doesn't matter that much anyway. All I really want is to help Granny recover her memories. I'm really grateful for all your help. Leave it to us! Now that we know the three locations, we just need to visit them one by one! Let's go to Wang Shu Inn first! Okay, I'll go get Granny! Wang Shu Inn... Wang Shu Inn... Do you remember this place, Granny? Yes. The fish here is very delicious. And if you look out into the distance, you can always spot a bird that's been left behind by its flock. I believe I used to have a room here. It had a window. Yes, yes, I spent a lot of time looking out that window. Which room was it again? Uh, let me look. I'll come with. Hyman's still having some trouble understanding what she's talking about, but if she's so familiar with this place, that must mean she lived here, right? Wait, huh? I sensed a non-human presence and decided to come take a look. If you're here, then there's likely no trouble afoot. I suppose there's no cause for concern. It's been a while, Cloud Retainer. I see you have returned to your previous form. I have indeed. I fought alongside her in this form on many occasions during the Archon War. Invention, the Bang Bang Continuous Fire Mechanism! Hands up and surrender, or be prepared to face the full might of the Adepti! An impressive imitation. <laughs> Paimon knows her all too well. Even so, Cloud Retainer was not always as ostentatious as you describe. You may be unaware, but her talent with Adepti Sigils is just as formidable as her skill in mechanics. The Archon War reached its peak after Guizhong's death. The Cloud Retainer who fought beside me in those devastating battles was taciturn and solemn, only speaking when she had to activate her sigils. A Cloud Retainer who barely talks? 
Paimon can't picture it. But what happened after that? If you were so powerful in your human form, why did you decide to take up your bird form again? Once one had bid farewell to the world of mortals, what use would one still have for such a shape? When dwelling between mountain and forest, away from the struggles and troubles of the mortal world, a mortal form is hardly the most fitting of choices. After the war, Cloud Retainer retired to Mount Outsong, only revealing herself to the occasional visitor, and always in her avian form. Although I do believe there was an occasion some thirty-odd years ago, when she decided to don her human form. I believe it was for the purpose of... One believes there is little need to relive bygone matters. Granny, are you okay? Uh... Back then, at this place, I... Perhaps this conversation should end here. I shall take my leave now. Should you encounter any trouble, you need only call my name. However, given that you are traveling with Cloud Retainer, I trust you are in good hands. Everyone! I, I think Granny is finally beginning to remember her past! Slowly now, calm your mind and recount what has been recalled. A long time ago, I stayed here to recuperate from my illness. Huh. So what Shinto said was true! You did fall ill! Was that why you went into hiding? I... don't remember. I'm very sorry, but... But I can't even remember the name of my illness. The only thing I can remember is that it took a great toll on me. And there was no cure for it. I was confined to my room in Wangshu Inn, where I spent many days unconscious. I'd come to every once in a while and stare at the migrating birds outside the window. It was a solemn sight. I remember crying, but I'm not even sure I knew why. One day, I met a traveling merchant. Upon hearing of my illness, he sold me a bottle of soul-revitalizing tea pills. He told me that the pills were concocted using adepti blood and could be used to alleviate my symptoms. Sure enough, I made a full recovery. My illness remained dormant for several decades after that. Wait, but if your illness remained dormant for several decades, are you saying that what you're going through now is just a relapse of what happened all those years ago? And it was all thanks to the pills that you managed to keep the symptoms in check? Uh, Paimon's brain kinda hurts. Do you remember anything else? I'm sorry, I don't. Uh, oh, if only I wasn't so useless. Hey, you're not useless. You've done so much for me. Watched me grow up. Raised me. How could you say that about yourself? Oh, fret not, dear child. Granny was just a bit frustrated. That's all. The recovery of a person's memories is a gradual process. Finding pieces of one's past is always superior to not finding anything at all. Let us make haste to the next location. Next location. Next location. Oh, why don't we go to the area north of Dweyunkars next? There isn't really a landmark there, so where should we start? Oh! Paimon's got it! Let's check out the houses in the area first! After all, if she was there for any length of time, then she would have stayed somewhere, right? Oh, Paimon's really got her thinking cap on today! At this rate, we'll recover all of Granny Wendai's memories in no time! <laughs> don't remember this place at all. I don't think I've ever been here before. Still, I was thinking... This place feels 
perfect for a game of hide and seek. Huh? Why a game of hide and seek? I'm not sure. Maybe it's because I used to play that game a lot with Shuyu when she was younger. Hmm. I don't remember playing it that much. Are you sure about that, Granny? We only played a few times, and we stopped once we realized that was no good at the whole seeking part. Ah. Is that so? Then I must be mistaken. Hmm. Not here, then. Let's try somewhere else. Place. It's Did you remember something, Granny? I I remember. Show you this is where your father was born. It was a moonless night. I had been injured, so your grandpa was supporting me. We fled together with some being in the fog behind us in hot pursuit. I had exhausted my strength when the labor pains came on, so we took refuge in this house. Your grandpa set up a barrier outside, but neither of us knew if it could hold the monsters back. I remember that night. I remember falling to my knees, reciting a prayer over and over. I alone am the source of this sin. Punish me as you wish for forsaking my oath, but spare my innocent child. Sin? Oath? Did you do something wrong? I don't know. I don't remember. I only remember praying in the darkness with all my strength until the sun finally rose again and the fog cleared out. Eventually, the house was filled with the sound of my baby's first cries. That baby was your father. I remember I clutched him tight to my chest and wept tears of joy. It was the first time I'd ever felt such happiness in my life. My dad? He was my pride and joy. And so are you, Shuyu. You're so much like him, and I love you both so much. But you're... always going to be different from me. I... Why? Just what did I do? I don't care what you might have done, Granny. You'll always be the person I love more than anything. You're too sweet, Shuyu. I'm lucky to have you with me. If not for you, I would not have had the courage to come here, to try to remember what I had forgotten. All right. Let's not stand around any longer. There's one place left, yes? Let's go take a look. If one recalls correctly, the next place should be Qingyu Peak. You and I, how fares your health? I may be a bit slow, but I'll do my best to keep up. I'm sorry to keep everyone waiting. Climb on, I shall carry you to the top. Oh, such lightness of weight. All those who grow old grow frail in the end, do they not? First, you lose your memory, then your health. Eventually, you end up losing everything. My only wish is to depart this world with a lucid mind, to free myself of this torment and the burden it places upon others. Fret not, you have my aid in this endeavor. Huh! <sighs> We're finally here. Does this place feel familiar to you, Granny Wendy? Let me see... Huh. 
How strange. Have I lived here before? When we were at Wangshu Inn and the abandoned house earlier, though I couldn't remember everything, I still felt a sense of familiarity. I could easily picture myself in those places. But here, I don't have that feeling. Perhaps I did come here in the past, but it just didn't leave a strong impression on me. But did the stories get it wrong then? Yeah, that's true. But they're also the only thing we have to go off of. Paimon was hoping this place would jog Granny Uendai's memory just like the others. I'm sorry to disappoint you two. It's alright, we're not going to give up yet. We'll figure something else out, just you wait. Thank you. If only I could remember... Huh? That way... What's that mountain? Oh, let Paimon look! Huh? Isn't that Mount Outsung? Looks like we've come full circle! Mount Outsung... Mount Outsung... Granny, are you okay? Don't push yourself, Granny. It's okay if you can't remember. You shouldn't do something that makes you sad. Mount Outsong, I... What am I, really? Mount Outsong holds some familiarity to you? It does, but I... I can't go back. Are you feeling unwell? My head... It feels all heavy and dizzy. I... Just... What is wrong with me? Miss Yun, is there anything you can do? Let us go to Mount Outsong. But... Fret not, all will be well. You and I, you have already given more than enough to the pursuit of this endeavor. You may leave the rest to me. I've prepared something that can aid you in suppressing the fear in your heart and restoring your lost memories currently resides at Mount Outsong. Wait, really? When did you do that? <laughs> I never leave anything to chance. All will reveal itself when we arrive. Here, this is it. Huh? But isn't this the mechanism that you were tinkering with when we first got here? Oh, is it another invention of yours? Precisely. A recent one at that. I am most pleased with the result. I call it the Suspensus Somnium Mechanism. It periodically releases a soft breeze, which when paired with a gentle adeptal tune, can help the listener subconsciously relax, and even enter a semi-hypnotic state. Soothing agitation and anxiety, relieving exhaustion and insomnia, its potential uses are numerous indeed. And of course, it can also aid in the recovery of lost memories. Oh, what a cool gadget! But if you had it all along, why did you keep it to yourself until just now? We could have come to Mount Outsong right off the bat and saved time on a lot of floating! How preposterous. Had you and I not recalled much of her past through her own efforts, the device would have nothing to draw upon. We Adepti can only help those who first resolve to help themselves. 
Had she lacked such determination and strength of character, one would have little to offer in way of assistance. Paimon thinks she gets it now. Uh, hey, what's that other thing? As previously mentioned, a gentle adeptal tune is required to take full advantage of the mechanism. One secured such a tune from Streetward Rambler. Only with her melodies can the mechanism reach its peak power. Oh, Paimon can feel what you mean! Paimon's body feels light as a feather. It's as if she's lying down on a warm patch of grass after a super satisfying meal. And you, you and I, is the mechanism helping you to relax? <sighs> <sighs> it appears she has already succumbed to the depths of reverie. Come, join one on this side. We shall give her some time to herself. The drought is over. But why do you look like you want to cry? The potion. It's nearly run its course. I've never regretted meeting you. Not even for a second. Please. Please, no. Have you forgotten? This is the world you left behind. One of gentle breeze and morning dew, perfectly straddled betwixt the realms of heaven and earth. This is your home. This is where you belong. You should have never left. The you of the past, the me from not that long ago, we should have never. Uh, uh. So that is the truth. No wonder this place is so familiar. I. Granny! Granny, are you okay? Cloud Retainer. Hmm. Your memories have returned. Wait, did you just call her by her full name? Does that mean... you already knew each other? Yes. I now remember everything. Everything. Granny, please don't cry. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, don't worry, my dear child. Granny is fine. I'm so sorry, everyone. You've gone to so much trouble on my behalf. It's all come back to me now. The most important thing that I had forgotten was the truth of what I once was. <sighs> One can sense the guilt that now plagues your conscience. Reclaiming a truth long buried is sure to come with a myriad of complex emotions. Perhaps one should recount the story on your behalf while you compose yourself. No, it's okay. Now that I've remembered, I must face my memories head on. Shuyu, everyone, I cannot thank you enough for all your help. I'm ready to tell you my story, if you're willing to listen. Please, Granny, don't force yourself. What happened in the past doesn't matter. I love you more than anything. Nothing you say can change that. I know, dear child. My feelings for you are exactly the same. It is for this reason that you deserve to know the truth. Some time ago, I made a terrible mistake. One for which I could never atone. Is this the sin that you mentioned in Dwayne Karst? What happened? I am, in truth, not a human being, 
My real form, one that I held for centuries, was that of a wild crane. I spent many, many years living on Mount Outsong, bathing in the soft breeze and drinking the sweet dew of the mountains. At some point, I somehow gained wisdom and sentience. The Lord of the Mountain, Cloud Retainer, became aware of my existence and began to share many stories with me. She even passed on the secret of cultivation to me. Though she never took me on as a formal disciple, I always saw her as my master. Whenever she took out her tools to work on mechanisms or new inventions, I would also stand next to her and watch. I even contemplated completing my training and becoming an adeptus in my own right. I followed her teachings, and time gradually passed us by. Until that fateful day, fifty years ago. Fifty years ago? That's right. Master regaled me with many stories of her past deeds. From them, I learned how she had saved people from a similar crisis in the past. She was the one I looked up to the most. More than anything, I dreamt of becoming an adeptus like her. I wanted to travel the land like she had, relieving suffering wherever I went. But I was still far from being a real adeptus. I possessed no ability to take on human form and fit in with the crowd. Once she learned of my desires, Master prepared a special dose of human mimicry potion for me. She warned me that the potion's effects would only last ten years, and if I were to fail to return to my original form at the end of that time, I would forever forget my past as a crane and become something neither human, beast, nor adeptus. Oh no. So that was... The source of your dementia all along! Was it because of... Grandpa? Indeed. I fell in love. Though he was human, he had spent his entire life training on Mount Tianhang. When we met, it was not only my first foray into the world below, but his as well. Although clumsy and impulsive as he was, you'd think he was the real strange bird among the two of us. But still, just like me, he cared deeply about the world and wanted, more than anything, to cleanse it of all pain and suffering. I could not help but fall for him. But my time continued to tick away. Those ten years passed by in a flash. Yet, I did not want to leave his side, so I... I... Oh no, what happened next? I committed an offense. I wanted to stay with him, even if it meant living a life full of pain and suffering. Even if it meant that I would eventually turn into a monstrosity. I knew I had betrayed Master's hopes. But I was too ashamed to face her. So I wrote her a long letter instead and asked someone to leave it outside her abode. I was convinced that she would not support my decision, and I lacked the courage to speak to her face to face. In my shame, I fled and tried to hide from the world, such that no one would be able to find me again. But that was only the beginning of my troubles. I began to suffer from a strange illness. My memories became hazy and confused, and I could no longer keep myself awake. I understood that my pain was caused by my refusal to return to the life I was fated to lead. Along with my memories as a crane, I soon forgot the true cause of my suffering as well. I knew only that I had committed a sin. All I could do was pray for forgiveness, even if I had long forgotten what needed to be forgiven. Looking back, I was beyond lucky to have come across that traveling merchant at Wangshu Inn. It was such a fortunate coincidence that we were there at the same time. If it weren't for those soul-revitalizing tea pills, I probably would have... <sighs> Granny! What's 
what's wrong? Coincidence? Why did I ever think it was a coincidence? Tea pills concocted using the blood of an adeptus? No, it couldn't be. Master, don't tell me. Back then, that merchant was actually... <sighs> Human custom would dictate the conferral of gifts to be in order when one's progeny is wedded, would it not? Consider the pills a symbol of one's best wishes. <sighs> so when I tried to conceal my name and mistakes from the world and hide myself away in perpetuity, the only person I managed to deceive was myself. You knew where I was all along. One still remembers when you were but a fledgling. You possessed a certain fondness for a particular game. You would hide yourself among a group of wild cranes and ask one to pick you out from among the flock. One found you with such ease every time. Tis a truth most evident. One always recognizes one's own, no matter what form they may take. Wait, wait, wait! Paimon's confused! So, Cloud Retainer, you found you and I again? But how? When? And what happened after that? <sighs> Perhaps it is now time for one to recount the rest of the tale. Oh, the, 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 the,